So I want to talk about the role of the microbiome, uh, just so that we understand how the microbiome is um, impacted uh, by what we eat and how our mental health is um, impacted by uh, the health of our microbiome. So the reality is that we have about 100 trillion microbes in our gut. We actually have more um, cells in our gut that are microbes, are not more cells in our gut, more cells in our body that are microbes than human cells. So we actually are kind of hosts to these um, microbes in our body. And we want to make sure that they are healthy and happy. We want to feed those um, good bacteria so that they serve our health and um, our physical and our mental health and our digestive health. And good bacteria and a healthy microbiome help our immune system and can boost our mood too. So we've already talked a bit about some high fiber, high antioxidant foods, fruits and vegetables, and we'll talk a little bit more about some more ideas um, to come in just a moment. So we want to feed those good bacteria. And what do they eat? They eat fiber. Just a reminder that fiber only comes from plant-based foods. You won't get fiber from any animal products. So when you're wanting to feed your gut, you need to reach for plants. But it's not only about food. Sleep, exercise, and social content uh, contact are also important. And I would add in there, it's not on the list, but breath work and meditation are also extremely valuable for your digestion and your healthy microbiome. So in order to feed your microbiome well, we want to choose prebiotic foods. And here are a few foods that particularly have the type of fiber that our guts like best. Fiber in general is great for your body in many ways, good for your cardiovascular health, good for your digestive health. Um, but these, are, these foods are particularly good for your gut bacteria. Um, garlic, asparagus, Jerusalem artichokes. So those are sunchokes, not the leafy artichokes, but they look like a little root. Um, barley, oats, uh, banana, flax seeds, and apples. So at this time of year, it would be wonderful to start your morning with perhaps a bowl of oatmeal. Um, you could slice some banana on the top or pour some applesauce in, apple cinnamon oatmeal perhaps. Um, so many uh, wonderful ways to incorporate these foods into your diet. And I would really um, speak out at right now for the value in flax seeds. So inexpensive. You can buy ground flax at the supermarket. I know some people will encourage you to buy the flax whole and grind it yourself. If you're able to do that on a daily basis, you can use a coffee grinder, even that's fine. But if that feels like a bit more work than you're able to do, don't worry too much. You will still get a lot of value from the ground flax. Buy the ground flax at the supermarket and store it in your fridge and add that ground flax into many recipes. So it would be great in your, um, in your oatmeal. It's perfect as an egg replacer in baking. You can use one tablespoon of ground flax and three tablespoons of water to replace an egg and baking works beautifully. Um, you can add it to soups and stews. You won't even really notice that it's there. It does have a bit of a brown color. So if, you're, if your soup was light in color, it might darken your soup slightly, but it will just provide a, a very gentle sort of nutty flavor. Um, but if you are eating, for example, chili um, or a uh, lentil dal, for example, stir in a couple of um, tablespoons of flax seeds and you'll be getting not only the benefit for your gut but also for your heart and your brain because um, flax seeds are rich in omega-3 fatty acids as well as healthy fibers. So we just talked about prebiotics which feed your gut. Now we can talk also about probiotic foods so probiotic foods mean that the foods themselves contain healthy bacteria that go into your gut and help build a healthier microbiome. 
So some of these foods are plant-based and uh, examples of that would be vegan kimchi. Some kimchis, which is a Korean uh, dish made with cabbage, some add uh, a bit of shrimp, um, but it's easy to find uh, vegan kimchi at um, health food stores or at some Korean markets if you just ask for one that's made without seafood. Um, kombucha, uh, sauerkraut, and dill pickles. Now, when you're looking for uh, probiotic sauerkraut or dill pickles, you need to look for the ones that are sold in the refrigerator section of the supermarket, not the dill pickles like the Bix style that are, are sold uh, on the shelf. Those are pasteurized and don't contain live cultures. You need to look for the briny pickles that are in the refrigerator section. Miso, uh, if you've tried miso soup perhaps when you went for sushi, uh, you may have had miso, but miso is a wonderful paste that can be mixed into many foods and gives a really tasty, salty, umami flavor. Um, and sourdough bread. I mean, probably I have to admit I've chosen sourdough bread as the picture here. That might be my favorite uh, vegan probiotic food of them all. But um, anyway, that's a bit of a list. Uh, there are other vegan probiotic foods, but these are some that you can easily find in your supermarket. Another thing that you can do to help your body um, cope well with stress and to feel calmer is to fo choose foods which are rich in magnesium. Magnesium is a uh, mineral that helps us to feel calmer when we have a magnesium rich diet. And here's a list of some great options for plant-based foods which are rich in magnesium. You may want to try taking a magnesium supplement close to bedtime within an hour or two of when you head to bed. This may, if you have trouble falling asleep, this may help calm your mind, or if you wake up frequently in the night with a lot on your mind, this may calm your mind. And um, anyway, looking for lovely foods like dark chocolate or avocado, quinoa, oatmeal showing up again, which is lovely, um, black beans, almonds, pumpkin seeds, spinach, so many healthy and wonderful options that are rich in magnesium, and it's easy to find magnesium-rich foods on a plant-based diet. There is also a product called Natural Calm, which is a magnesium-rich drink. It has sort of a citrusy flavor. It's a bit bubbly, and you might enjoy that as a drink, and you can try having that in the evening, and it will um, sometimes, for some people, it helps them to sleep better or just have a greater sense of well-being and calm um, after eating some magnesium-rich foods or even taking that magnesium supplement. So here are some supplements also to consider if you're not taking these, uh, vitamin D and omega-3. And I want to encourage you that plant-based options are available if you follow a plant-based diet and you've avoided perhaps taking omega-3s thinking, oh, those are only coming from fish sources, and so I don't want to take them. Um, we can get a lot of omega-3s in our diet already uh, from whole plant-based foods. Walnuts and flax seeds are two very good sources of plant-based omega-3s. However, although those are good sources, they are only sources of one type of omega-3, which is called ALA. If we want to get DHA, which is uh, potentially protective um, against Alzheimer's and dementia, then you want to opt for a plant-based um, DHA supplement. Now, uh, a lot of people think that oily fish like salmon produce DHA in, on their own. In fact, they don't. They eat sea plants um, and store that omega-3 in their tissues. So we can just get the supplement from the sea plants themselves. So opting for uh, a plant-based omega-3, a few brands available in Canada, I'm not affiliated with any brands, are Aqua Omega, 
NutraVeg, and um, Udo's Oil Plus DHA. Uh, also, I encourage everyone to take a vitamin D in the wintertime. If you find that in the summertime you spend a lot of time outdoors, you're active outdoors, and you also um, are uncovered. Uh, not You don't have to be completely uncovered, but at least your arms um, and legs uncovered, your face and hands uncovered um, in the summertime for, say, 15 to 20 minutes of good sun exposure each day, then that's fine. You don't need a vitamin D supplement probably in the summertime. However, in the wintertime, uh, around 40% of Canadians uh, have low vitamin D stores. And so it is wise to take a vitamin D supplement in the wintertime. It's very good for our mental health, very good for our, um, for our uh, protection against infection, which in the face of COVID right now, we're all particularly interested in. So taking vitamin D in the winter um, is a great idea. Even in the summer, if you uh, and your doctor have concerns that your vitamin D levels may be low. So just focusing on the bigger picture of building a stronger microbiome, um, eating a high fiber diet is valuable, getting enough sleep is important, um, reducing stress. We've already had some wonderful examples today of how to reduce stress in your life. Um, getting out in nature, whether that be in the garden or in the park, just spending time in nature. I know we're heading into the winter season and we won't be gardening as much. Uh, but when springtime comes again, if you do have access to a garden where you can get your hands in the dirt a bit, that's very good for your microbiome. Activity is valuable and helpful to help you to digest. If you're active and you're hydrated, you drink enough water or tea, um, that's wonderful. Also being social is valuable. Now we are asked and encouraged to restrict our social contact at the moment, but uh, being social as much as you can with those who are safely in your bubble is good. Um, it's good for your mental health, good for your microbiome. And actually, we do share uh, microbiome microbes with those that we closely interact with, those that we touch, those that we hug. And that's a good thing. Um, and so do persist within your safe bubble to have physical contact and be in touch with one another. So next steps, I want to encourage you to seek help if you need to, please don't be alone in uh, a place of feeling that your mental health is struggling. Um, if you are feeling that uh, you your mental health is deteriorating, uh, anxiety or depression setting in, please reach out for help. Um, seek therapy, perhaps, if that's uh, something that is available or interesting to you. Um, looking for more techniques of breath work or yoga um, may also be something that speaks to you and, and draws you in. Uh, look to medication if that's something that you and your doctor feel is a good option for you in responding to difficulties with mental health. Healthy eating can certainly be part of supporting your uh, mental and physical health and Remembering that a plant-based diet uh, will provide you with the fiber that you need to build a healthier and stronger gut, and um, that also in turn can help your mental health. And creating a healthy social environment where you feel you have others to turn to, whether that be using Skype or Zoom, or whether that be um, in person, with those in your bubble, then um, that uh, is what is available and useful for you to do. So I also want to say, if you want to reach out to me anytime, I'm very happy to connect with you. I'm on social media uh, and I would love to chat with any of you if you have questions about your own nutrition. Thank you. And I'm open to questions now as well.